What is up guys? Welcome to a brand new video. Now this is a video I've been really excited to make because we finally have two new champions but the one I'm really excited about is we have a new AD carry champion. Let me bring my microphone a little bit up. Might make it a bit better but we have an AD carry which is the... Now I'm not exactly sure how to say these yet but I think Zaya, the, the female, is the uh, AD carry and then I want to say Raken because I think that sounds cooler, but maybe Raken, I'm not sure. The Charmer, he is the support, and both of these are designed to be a duo. So they are their own champions. You can play them on their own in like individual games. You can pick the support on their own and not the AD carry, vice versa, whatever you want to do. But when you play them together, they have special interactions as well, which we're going to get into. So the first one we're going to go for is the AD carry. So this is a damage one. We're just going to go through the abilities very quickly. I'm really excited to make this video because obviously I main AD carry. I know I'm not wearing pink, I'm not Canadian, but hopefully you guys can enjoy this anyway. And we're gonna start with the passive very quickly. So I'm just gonna show it on screen. Um, basically she has her uh, auto attacks, which will have these feathers on them. And then they'll be gonna be passing through all enemies in their path. They deal reduced damage um, after the first one, but they leave this feather where they land. So watching that again, she goes through all of them. Just gonna fire these off in a line and she leaves the feathers at the end which will be important in a second for one of the other abilities now this one is going to be kind of similar she throws two feathers instantly through in a line um through them as well and leaves the feathers in place so this is probably going to be her bread and butter uh spell i guess like a wave clear spell very similar to caitlin q except she's shooting these feathers out instead right then her w she's going to be using um a storm of oh a plumage I guess, of feathers together. Uh, basically empowers her next couple of attacks, but when she uses them, she's gonna get a um, burst of speed when she uses them against an enemy champion. Now this is the first one where we actually have an interaction with uh, Raken, Raken, I'm gonna say Raken because I think it sounds cooler. So if she has this active when she's near Raken, you can see this thing a little around him as well. Um, he is gonna actually get the benefit as well. So he is gonna be using these, um, well, they're going to in increase the strength and speed of the next few basic attacks. So basically, both of them are going to be attacking for more damage and faster. So that's like the first interaction between the two of them, which I think is pretty cool. But one issue I'm going to have is I wonder how strong these two are going to be together. Like if they're just going to be completely broken, but individually they're pretty okay together broken which means you kind of have to ban one or the other or take one away which i think is a pretty stupid thing but we'll see how that actually plays out or not so this is where the feathers come in um so that was uh, the, the cue to start with what this is actually going to do so ignore this first bit that's nothing to do um with the e basically she's going to recall all the feathers that are um are out there right now so if she uses them with a passive with a q a w whatever it actually is um, and then she's going to recall them back and they do um, damage. But as you can see, this last little bit here, he's actually rooted like a Jin W, for example, or a Morgana bind. So if he's hit, if a target is hit by more, uh, it says several feathers at once. I, I'm assuming it's three. If they're hit by three, several, maybe two, but I'm probably thinking three. We'll see in the, whether she's on the PB later. Then it's going to be rooted as well. Finally then, for the ultimate. It's going to leap into the air, like a conal shape here, and fire off a bunch of feathers afterwards, which are going to... Um, sorry, each of which deals damage to struck enemies and has the feather. The thing that is really interesting, actually, there's two things. So one, the combo with the E here is going to be really, really effective. So you fire out all of these things in a cone in front of you, these five arrows. Um, and then you're going to be able to feather, so not arrows. And then you're going to be able to drag them all backwards as well. So it'll be one of those things where it might not do an amazing amount of damage on its own. You fire them out, but then when you pull them back, you're going to be able to AOE root people. That is kind of what I'm thinking there. If if all these arrows or these feathers fly out and then you drag them back through the enemy team, number one, that could do an amazing amount of damage on the way there and on the way back. But actually it could be rooting multiple people at the same time. But also, as you can see on screen now, with the arrow, you actually become untargetable once you jump up and you use your ultimate. So you can use this as an outplay tool as well as damage. You can still move around um, while you're in this ultimate as well. So you're not like rooted in place. You can still run away or go forward or whatever, but you actually dodge stuff. So for example, like if a, a Z jumped onto you, you could jump up and you'd avoid some damage as well, which I think is gonna be really, really cool. But 
Let's go on to Rake and Rack and however you want to say this. Because this one is really cool as well. This is the support version. And there are actually uh, quite a few different things with this that make him seem a bit more... I, I don't know, just really, really useful as a support. There's loads of different things that he's good at. He seems to be a really good defensive support, but he also seems to be a really good disruptor. That's kind of where I'm thinking, leaning towards more like an Alistair kind of pick, if this makes sense. You'll see in a second. The passive is going to generate a shield um, every... It says even in combat, it doesn't say how long, um, but you can reduce the ability to cooldown by attacking an enemy champion. So for a support, the more you auto-trade, the, like with this, the enemy support or whatever you want to do, uh, you're going to get the shield back quicker. But really cool for the bot lane because you can go in and use your, like, and trade, but you're going to start with a shield. So you absorb some of the AD carry's damage and it's not going to be as bad. He's probably going to be really annoying for the enemy AD carry to deal with. This next one is going to be throwing a feather forward. Now, if it connects with, uh, say, the champion or epic monster, so think of like a dragon or a baron, for example, it deals damage and then the cloak surges with magic. Now, what it's actually going to do is heal. So it, it, after a brief delay, it's going to heal if we watch again. So now he has this circle around him, right? After this delay, after it fills up, he would actually heal himself, people around him. But if he goes to a nearby enemy champion right next to them, as you can see here when he moves, it's instantly gonna trigger. So there's two sides to this. One, you hit a champion, it's gonna heal, but if you uh, go next to a champion, then it's going to heal immediately. So this could be really cool, like if your AD is dying, for example, you use this and you run next to them or flash on top of them even, and you'd be able to heal them instantly afterwards. So, so far, he's a shield for himself and a heal for people around him. Pretty ridiculous, but this is where it gets crazy. So he's gonna leap forward, landing pretty stylishly apparently at his destination, which he then pauses, runs up into the air, jumps up into the air, I guess, and he knocks up nearby opponents. So if we just watch it again, very quickly, if my internet will last. It's actually, a, the first thing is it's a reasonably long distance between them. So goes in, knocks people up around him. It's an AOE knock up. It's quite a big area of effect. There's two things. That is a big area to do to go for anyway. You could use this to escape. You can use it to engage whatever you want it to do. But actually, like, it's a big area to jump in. But it's also, that air radius there is actually pretty big. That's like, what, you could fit like an entire enemy team in that, really. That's much bigger than a... It seems like that is bigger than an Alistair Pulverize, for example, for a very similar spell. So, so far, we have a shield for him. Uh, we have a heal and we have a knock up pretty crazy already right now This is where it's really cool though. So you actually have a leap So this with the synergy with your um, E for example, or you can use it to escape you can use it to go aggressive the uh, Heal before when you had that remember if you go next to an enemy uh, An ally champion you would heal them immediately straight away not have to wait So you could use your heal to start with your Q hit an enemy then jump to an ally and this would immediately heal so it has two jumps. Um, you can use the second one straight after the first one if you wanted to. You can even use it on the same target again, apparently. It does give them a, a shield as well, so it shields your ally while you jump to them. And the other thing, this is the interaction with uh, Zaya, so, or Zaya, I guess, Zaya, but it's actually increased range. See, this first range here is a normal range. This second range is for Zaya. So you jump even further away or towards her. It's just increasing the range, basically. So. To keep track of everything, we have shield for him, heal uh, for, for the allies around, we have a knock up, and now we have a shield for allies as well. Getting pretty ridiculous, uh, the mobility on these two seems to be through the roof, which is kind of crazy, but now into the ultimate. So, you go into a sprint, and you can taunt people. You see this icon above people's head, it means that they're able to be taunted. You're only allowed to taunt someone once. It's called a charm, it's basically a taunt though, honestly. So I'm gonna pause it here. You see this little icon above their heads? That means they're still able to be taunted or charmed, whatever you wanna do. Basically, when you hit a, a, you move faster anyway, but then after you hit the first champion, it's gonna give him a huge boost in move speed, which lets you get to the other ones a little bit faster. So he's already running quite fast, if I rewind it. Running quite fast, then he runs even faster, you see, as he's hitting that first champion, and he drags them around with him. So it's kind of like an AoE Ari charm. That's how you really want to think about it. So to sum up, like, this guy's kit, I guess, we have passive, we have a shield for him, kind of like a Malphite shield. We have a heal on the Q and a bit of damage. The W is going to be 
Um, the knock-up, the AoE knock-up when you fly as well over a distance. The E is going to be jumping to an ally, which could be used with the heal as well. And then the ultimate is like an AoE run around Ari charm. You run into an enemy champion, you're going to charm them. Now, if we go back to Zaya again, just to recap very quickly, we have the passive, which means you're going to be doing AoE with your basic attacks, cutting through multiple people and leaving a feather. We have a Q, which fires those feathers in a line and leaves them at the end as well. We have the W, which is going to increase the speed and also the strength of her next few basic attacks. That also works with Rakan as well, Rakan. Um, so they're both going to get that if they're in the same game together. She gets that short burst of speed, remember, as well, which might be nice for kiting, but also in like a crit build or anything like that. Imagine getting a bonus, like, however much it is, damage on your next couple of auto attacks and the attack speed as well. That's going to be pretty crazy, in my opinion. And then we have the E, which is going to be recalling all of those feathers on the map back to you and is going to be rooting people if several... Fe Oops, sorry several feathers hit someone at the same time and finally for the ultimate we have her leaping into the air becoming untargetable so for example she won't take any damage she won't take any crowd control she'll completely dodge stuff amazing outplay potential like i cannot say how excited i am just for this just to be untargetable when someone dives onto you to try and kill you or locks you on with like a nautilus ultimate or a fish a fizz a fizz fish like fizz is ultimate you could completely dodge that if you time this ultimate correctly it's insane it's really really clever you're going to be firing these arrows out so as much as it is offensive you have this then you can ping them back and root people so it's, it's good damage but it seems to be a defensive tool in the same way so defensive and offensive uh, we're going to see what they both like they'll both come onto the pb very soon hopefully and i'll try and get like a gameplay out especially of the ad carry but Hopefully I can find a friend to do um, two of them together. I just can't wait to make this brief initial look at both of them because obviously as an AD carry main, this is right up my street. I'm really excited. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the first look and yeah, I will catch you in tomorrow's video.